Yes, brother. What's the next question? Uh, Maybe after your next question, you're convinced. No, my uh, my next question is not actually related to what you have talked about. This is quite personal. My question is, how come many countries considered you persona non grata? They find you very despicable, and yet, as far as I'm concerned, you're very insightful. You're not loathsome. I wonder why. Brother, can you repeat the first, uh, first part of the question? Uh, many countries consider you persona non grata. It's a Latin expression meaning you are an unacceptable type of a person. Maybe they hate you, they loathe you. They find you despicable. I wonder why. Can you enlighten us on this? Brother asked a very good question. That why do many countries fight me personal? Ungrata means I am not welcome. He is referring to mainly UK. Officially, only one country. Okay, UK. But when you say many countries, I agree with you. I agree with you. Many countries may be finding me personal non-grata may not like me to enter the country, I agree with you, but officially only one country has excluded me, that is UK. UK. You're asking why? You know why? Because the UK government find me that I am the person, mashallah, who's, who is able to remove the misconceptions about Islam. The most popular Islamic satellite channel in UK is Peace TV. About 25%, 100 million people watch the channel throughout the world and more than 25% of the viewers are non-Muslim. So if a non-Muslim misconceptions are cleared, many people will start accepting Islam. So, that's the reason the previous government, that's the Labour Party, the head of the anti-terrorism department, Charles Farr, in 2009, he sent a person and he requested me that Dr. Nai, can you cooperate with us? I said, what cooperation do you want? You can reach those Muslims who we cannot reach. I said, maybe. He said, can you help us and help our country to reach, give the message of peace to these Muslims? I said, I agree with you. That there are some Muslims who are misguided. But there have been some misconceptions in the UK government. I will help you under two conditions. Point number one, you should not ask me to do anything against Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Point number two, I do not want a single penny from you. They were willing to fund me. I said it's the religion of Islam. We have to help others. And Alhamdulillah, we don't require a penny from you. If these two conditions are fulfilled, I am with you. Later on the elections took place and the conservatives came the Tories, in less than one month's time, the Home Secretary, Theresa May, you know, they want to show to the country that they are strong against the Muslims. But the most popular Muslim person they could find was Zakir Naik. And we were about to, one month after they came to power, the new government, we had had the three prestigious venue, Wembley Arena, Sheffield Arena and NEC Birmingham, you know, all these top. And we had done publicity. And before I landed, one day before, she issued an exclusion order, which came to me from, from UK to the High Commission in Bombay, and said, I had a valid visa for five years. Many times that I've been going since, I've been going since the past 20 years. I have gone more than 15 times, given lectures, big, big gatherings, largest gathering, more than 25,000 people with paid tickets. I mean, the organizers have kept tickets. So, a valid visa which was issued one year back, in the year 2009, when I was going to go in 2010, in June, exclusion order comes and she quotes three, four paragraphs, why she feels I am personal non grata. I am not conducive for the people of UK. One quotation she quoted from my lecture. I'll give you the quotation, ask you, is this quotation right or wrong? I said that what happened in 9 11? In 9 11, more than 3,000 innocent people were killed. 
that act is to be condemned the twin tower destruction Islam does not agree with that at all because Islam clearly says in Surah Maida chapter 5 of 32 if anyone kills any other human being whether Muslim or non-Muslim unless it be unless it be murder or for spreading corruption in the land it is as though he has killed all of humanity so in this context I said that the act of 9-11 where more than 3,000 innocent people were killed to be condemned more than 50% people were killed in the London tube bombing it has to be condemned in Bombay more than 180 innocent people were killed that has to be condemned but the Muslims should not put a full stop here we should also condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Afghanistan the thousands of innocent people killed in Iraq the thousands of innocent people killed in Palestine this did not go down the throat of the Home Secretary Theresa May I am asking you you are a non-Muslim, correct? Not Muslim yet. Not Muslim yet is a better word than non-Muslim. Not yet Muslim. You are not yet Muslim. I am asking you, is there anything wrong in my statement? But these Western countries, which talk about freedom of speech, talk about human rights, according to me, the, the human rights violation maximum is in the Western countries. <laughs> maximum. Including USA. They talk about human rights, what's happening in Guantanamo Bay? What's happening? They want to send the army where they think they are going to get wealth. And that's what the American people are saying. 9-11 was an inside job. What was the agenda? So they talk about freedom of expression, freedom of speech. These statements, these statements according to Home Secretary Zame is not conducive for the people of UK. Why? Because they know the truth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, seek the truth and so shall free you. But Teresa May doesn't believe in that. Quran says in Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 81, وَقُلْ جَالَكْ وَذَاكَ الْبَاطِلْ إِنَّ لَبَاطِلَ قَانَا زَوْكَ When truth is heard again, falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. One more thing which the media was blowing up. I made a statement in my answer of hijab. That Women when they wear western clothes, skirts, mini, low neck and revealing clothes, it invites them to be raped, was my statement. So it came as, as an article, a big article, that Dr. Zakir Naik is a misogynist. For those who don't know what's a misogynist, misogynist is a person who hates women. That's the reason so many women. I cannot see how many women are there. The brother said that there are more than 50,000. And, and Sheikh Isha Khoiji told me yesterday that inshallah it will be the historic gathering of Bahrain. About 20,000 would turn up. Uh, it's not only historic gathering in Bahrain. The largest gathering in the Middle East was in the year 2009 in Dubai, 30,000. And I feel it is surely more than 30,000. Not looking at the women, women also mashallah more. I don't know whether it's 40,000 or 50,000. So if Zakir is a misogynist, then why do so many women attend my talks? And that same newspaper, Times, one year back, in March 2009, they wrote an article that one in every seven Britisher feels that the women should be hit because they were relieving clothes. One in every seven Britisher feels and thinks that the woman should be hit for wearing revealing clothes. I never made that statement. But Britishers make no problem. And in the year 2005, the same newspaper did a survey and they said that 26% of the Britishers feel that women, because they were revealing clothes, they are raped. So if the 26% Britishers say they are misogynist, one Indian Muslim says he is a misogynist. This is freedom of speech. It doesn't go down their throat well. So the problem is that they don't want the truth to prevail. That's the reason, mashallah. I was the first Muslim speaker to file a case against the Home Secretary. Not that I knew I would win. I knew how truthful they are. It was mentioned in the exclusion order. I cannot file a case. So we could not go to low court, we had to go to high court. In the High Court, 
we knew more in their favor. We went to the court of appeal. Couple of months back, now we have gone to Supreme Court. I don't expect justice. We hired the best of lawyers. We hired Tony Blair's wife, Cherry Booth. You know Cherry Booth? That's the Matrix Chamber, one of the leading lawyers. We hired the best of lawyers. Government kept two, we kept four. We kept a Christian, a white man, a Sikh, a Hindu, and a Muslim. Four top lawyers. We did not leave any stone unturned. Not that we would win. To show to the world. And the judge said, I don't want to know the context of the speech. The Home Secretary has a right to exclude who she wants. Next, we will go to the European Court. There is a Human Rights European Court. European Court of Human Rights, ECHR. There, I think the chances are more. Because there they don't consider who has given the exclusion order. But right or wrong, we, same day, we get a call from the Canadian government. My five years visa cancelled, want to go again, apply again. Same thing in USA. They are afraid of this man. The beard. No weapon of mass destruction, no weapon. Only the weapon of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the Quran. They don't want that peace should prevail. Therefore the name of our channel is Peace TV. It is the most popular channel, mashallah. And in Allah's grace, we are present even in USA. But not on the very popular platform. We are on the open air, you know. But the most popular in USA is the cable. Inshallah, Allah willing. Within the next two months, Peace TV will also go through cable in USA and Canada, inshallah. We don't have to go personally. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Islam will enter every home. I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make me instrument in making this hadith come true that Islam will enter every home, inshallah. Hope that answers the question, brother.